get in front of your brand and not behind it. Be bold and brave enough to get on live stream and answer some questions. Talk about how you were inspired and why you started your brand. You're listening to Side Hustle Pro, the podcast that teaches you to build and grow your side hustle from passion project to profitable business. And I'm your host, Nikayla Matthews Okome. So let's get started. This episode of Side Hustle Pro is brought to you by Heat Free Hair. I received over 2,000 likes on my wedding photo and tons of DMs from people asking me about this hair. If you were one of the ladies who DM'd me, then you know that the hair that I was wearing during my wedding was from Heat Free Hair. My natural hair texture is somewhere between 4A and 4C, and this is the only brand that I trusted to blend perfectly with my own natural hair on that day. It blended seamlessly, lasted all night, and then I was able to rock it with a twist out on my mini moon the rest of the week. I have worn it countless times because it's so versatile. And to this day, I still get comments asking me about my wedding hair. Heat Free Hair has wefted hair. They have clip-ins, drawstring ponytails for women with natural hair. And now Heat Free is offering Side Hustle Pro listeners 15% off your first purchase when you use our code Side Hustle Pro at checkout. So to take advantage of this offer, go to heatfreehair.com. That's heatfreehair.com and use code SIDEHUSTLEPRO. I'll be sure to place the promo code in the show notes. All right. Welcome to the guest chair, Sharice. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super excited. Thank you for being here on this busy Monday. Um, I know Mondays are always hectic, so let's get right into it. Give us a peek into the life of Sharice for those who don't know you and want to hear who you are in your own words. Who is Sharice Jones? When was she bitten by the entrepreneurship bug? (laughs) Thank you. Well, Sharice Jones is actually a wife of this upcoming October will be nine years. I am a twin mother of four-year-old boys, and they are uh, named Jackson and Julian, and they are my everything, but they're also real crazy. Um, (laughs) <laughs> the household is always lit. And I am a savvy entrepreneur. I own a company called Sassy Jones. Um, Sassy Jones is an award-winning accessory brand that sells confidence. And the entrepreneur bug bit me when I continually kept being fired um, back in my corporate gig. Like, I was fired from three high-paying, like, re- like really good jobs. Really oh good my. Jobs. Yes. <laughs> That's how I got pushed out. Cause you know how sometimes they'll be like, God will just push you off the edge of the mountain. If you won't soar, if you won't jump. Right. Mm-hmm. But, and, and the truth is if I was not fired, I would still be at those, those jobs because they paid so well. Wow. And I didn't know what it meant. I just, I kept associating that with inadequacy. I did not know um, until the last time that it happened, like, this is a pattern. You want to do things your own way. You need to go make your own rules. You know, so instead of trying to fit in a box, you need to get out of it and step on it. So I started my brand. I was like, okay, I, I love fashion. Um, I wanted a, a small barrier to entry. So I was like, okay, let's do accessories. I started a website, didn't make any money, maybe $25 a day. I was like, I definitely cannot leave my good job off of this. And then <laughs> <laughs> like, it's just not worth We've it. all been there like, all right, this is cute, but how is this going to add up? Mm-hmm. Hey, like, yeah, this, entre- you know, because it's so sexy, the word entrepreneur, like this is cute, but I, this is not sustainable. And at the time I didn't have kids. So I decided to get in front of some people because I knew what I was, was a salesperson. And I set up at a trade show, didn't have any idea what it was going to be like, had no idea if I was going to make my $800 back that I had had invested in it. And it was the best day ever. It was the absolute best day ever. Why was was that? What happened? Oh, Oh my gosh. I was so afraid of showing up because of all the other competitors. There was Tracy Lynn, there's Paparazzi, there's all these other well-named jewelry brands. Why would they come and buy from little old me? So that was the first self-defeating message I taught myself. The second thing was like, I don't even know if I'm going to make my money back, but I'm going to just give it my best shot. So there was so much of fear associated with that day. But let me tell you what happened. So we get there and I have all of these women around who are loving the pieces, but they're not purchasing because they're saying, 
I don't think I have the confidence or what it takes to pull that kind of jewelry off. I don't think, really? Girl, yes, yes. Because you yes. make bold, vibrant pieces. And so I, I didn't realize people could be intimidated by them. Oh, it's a thing. I spend my career, and I think that's our success, how we teach. I spend so much time teaching and counseling that you are worth this and that you can take your china out of the cabinet. That's why Sassy Jones is successful, not because of our what, it's because of our how. So on that day, um, I transformed women and I handed them the mirror and we yoked them up and, and sparkled them up and we all got gathered around them like, girl, you got this, you can do this, and sold them confidence and how they looked in the mirror so differently at themselves. I became addicted to that light. So addicted. I was like, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. I'm enjoying this. They're enjoying it. It's trans it's, you know, transforming lives in such a small way at the time. And then also I was concerned about my investment, my $800 investment. I looked at the sales at the end of the day. I was like, well, Lord, this is more money than I made in one day. And I'm making my corporate gig in a month. <laughs> wow. Girl, yes, in a whole month. So and a I trade need show. To just, mm-hmm. Yes, I need to Do leave. you remember the name of that trade show? Yes, it was the Transformation Expo. Okay. So, oh, my gosh. I didn't even associate the name. Yeah, Transformation Expo. Wow. So you, you know, it's funny you mentioned that you had no plans to leave your good paying job and kept getting pushed out. So what was that career path? And was there anything about it that the skills from that translated into helping you grow and launch uh, Sassy Jones Boutique? Oh, yeah. Everything from it. So the career path was sales. I was a saleswoman. I've sold everything from banking products to insurance to food to restaurants. And so the transferable skill there was a at Bank of America. I learned customer service. They have an unwavering dedication to customer service. So that is where I learned my backbone that the company has today. Um, and then also the soft skills and the relatable skills that it requires to sell someone something you have to understand their need and be able to cater to their need and speak their language better than anyone else in your industry. And so those two things I learned and they definitely serve us well today. Now, you know, one thing about your online boutique, and it's a physical boutique, excuse me, as well as online, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I have never seen pieces like this. I think it's just so creative, like you said, so vibrant. And I always wonder, how do you find these pieces? (laughs) Oh, my God. Not to give all your secret juice away, but I know, yeah, I just need to know. There's a story. Yes, tell us. Okay, so I love that you asked me that. So in the beginning, how I found them was Etsy. I would work with independent designers to to find my stuff because I knew I wasn't I wasn't like doing the numbers that I was doing that I'm doing today. So I get like buy five pieces here, five pieces there, and then get them from a lady who made leather earrings in Colorado or you know some China shop that I found online or something like that, right? Right. And then so what happened in August of last year? I was operating like any other boutique who um, sourced from wholesalers because that's what boutiques do. They carry lines. And so I was frustrated by a customer because she thought that she found a supplier. And what she did was proceeded. We have a VIP customer group. It's called Secret Society. She proceeded to share this information with all of my VIP customers Wait, I'm confused. What do you mean? No, you're not confused at all. Exactly what I said. (laughs) Exactly, Nikayla. Exactly what I said. Yeah. Yep. So she emailed me. She said, I think I found this, this, and this. This is so much cheaper. I could just buy it here. And she didn't get the response she was looking for. I told her to go right ahead. Because what I do know is the connection that our brand has with our customers, your devilish behavior will not stand up. Not a day. And so she inboxed about 260 people out of our VIP group, to all of them. And this this tirade went on for 45 days, almost two months. And I was at, even outside of the group. There were Facebook friends. I guess she went down on my friend list and was like, who is this woman and why is she sending me this information? And yada, 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 right? And so... And that could have played out a thousand different ways. I could have got petty with her. I could have done this, this, and this. We ended up sending a cease and desist. But after the dust was settled, I became frustrated because she thought she had something. And that pushed me to start designing. And I said, 
And also I became frustrated that I could no longer find in the marketplace the things that I wanted to sell. So I just started to create them. So all the necklaces and the handbags and all the things that our customers love as of August last year comes out of my crazy brain and I cannot draw. I did not attend FIT. I attended Hampton University and dropped out my junior year. And um, it's just me translating and saying, hey, I think lava beads would look really cool in 80 different colors on six layers of chain, you know? So that's how we get to the product that we have today. And thank God that happened because we are in Macy's and in January we'll be on HSN from that decision. Wow, that is amazing. I did not realize that. I mm-hmm. love that. So <laughs> then is it a matter of you had to source the actual manufacturers to develop yes. your ideas? Okay. And then yep. how did you go about that? Was that like a process of searching Alibaba or I don't know where you find <laughs> people yeah. who can make your designs? Yes. Yeah. So it was. It's actually a combination of two things. I went to Magic in Vegas and I went to the cause typical boutique owners go to source like clothes or whatever it is that they sell from makers. Um, But I wanted to go to the actual sourcing floor where they make fabrics and they make the beads and they have all those selections. Um, So that was the first thing. And then the second one was, yes, Alibaba. I test. I went on Alibaba and scoured um, so many different factories and had people on the ground in China attending these factories to make sure that they are up to par, that they can deliver and that their quality is good. And we just and I went through a few of them. Like the one that I started with definitely are not the factories that I'm using today to manufacture So let's talk about the fact that you didn't hate your job. So that's something I want to emphasize here, because I think a lot of times when you hear the word side hustling or on the show, we're all side hustle pro. Some of us are scaling to be full time businesses. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you dislike your job. But what made you want this creative outlet of particularly an accessories boutique? You could have done anything in the world. I know. I know. You're right. I did not hate my job at all. In fact, I loved it. And I love selling to people. I just hated that I couldn't make my own decisions. <laughs> that, that was the only problem. But in terms of the accessories, I had always been like very fashionable. Since a child, I watched my grandmother dress herself and she dressed me in the biggest ruffle socks. And we attended the Pentecostal <laughs> church and my, my legs were kicking off of the pew in like the best Easter dress. You know, like it was just a part of my blood and the woman in my family. It's who we are. We love to show up well. Um, but also... I didn't have a lot of money when I started my business. I sold a car. I sold a Mercedes that I had paid off to buy my first round of inventory. And from that money, I had to make it stretch. I knew I couldn't buy a whole lot of clothing in all these different sizes. And so to me, accessories were smarter because A, it's one size fits all. I don't have to worry about sizes and plus size versus a size zero. And B, It literally is the icing on the cake for any outfit. You're always looking for accessories, no matter what you what you have on. So the clothes are good, but it's that icing that really makes the difference between how one woman rocks it and the next. That is so smart. I've never thought of accessories in that in that sense. And yeah, worried about sizes and having to figure that out is a pain. I just, you know, place a new t shirt order after I like gave up the e commerce business, but I was just like, okay, I got to do this. And I was like, man, this, I don't know. I don't know who needs what size. This is a lot. This is a lot. Yeah. (laughs) How are you supposed to know those things? No. Everybody can fit this one necklace, though. Everybody can. (laughs) Everybody can. Now, you are so fabulous when it comes to marketing. So we have to spend some time on this because when it comes to standing out online, it is not an easy feat. I love your approach to getting people comfortable with buying from you. You know, if you come across Sassy Jones Boutique on Instagram, you might say, oh, that's cute. But am I going to give my money to someone I don't know yet? You know, it, it might take you a while to make that decision. So tell us about how you decided to differentiate and well, how you do differentiate yourself, you know, the sparkle parties included. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's something, it's a tool that I use called relationship marketing. And the pretty much what that is, it is the sales decision for the long haul versus a sales decision for today. So if you're thinking about being in line at food line or your local grocery store, like that's not that's not a long-term relationship. Yes, you'll come back there, but those people don't help you go down the aisle and pick out your groceries. And those people don't tell you, oh my God, this seasoning would really taste 
a lot better than the seasoning you've been using on your chicken, right? We don't have relationships with them, but the marketing funnel improves when you have relationships with people. So that's what we focus on. And our, it, we, we can start with our language. We talk to the pain point of our customers. For example, if you look at the product descriptions on our website, they're unlike any other product descriptions. We're talking to you where you are. You think we're your friends. Girlfriend, this necklace would sparkle gorgeously under restaurant lighting when you get that first date when you thought he'd never call, right? <laughs> so, like, th that's the language that we use versus salesy, right? And then the other thing is we'd speak to their pain point. Like, we have most of our customers are size 16s, 18s, and up, right? And so they face not being able to put their arms through bangles. They face... Um, it, necklace is not laying right. So in our things, we meet them where they are. Hey, industry standard chains are three inches. We have six inch extenders. We do bangle stacks that are seven and eight inches versus industry standard of six. You know, so like different things like that. And then you have, yes, the marketing. So we deepen the relationship in a few ways. We have internal customers and external customers. Our external customers is everyone on social media. Um, the, you come to the sparkle party that we invented. If you don't know what that is, it is our weekly HSN. And when I say it is on another level other than anything that you've ever seen before, I can guarantee it. So there is live music. There is that we have celebrities from time to time, like real housewives. They come through. It is a whole thing. And all it is, is me teaching you how to style our new arrivals, but there's thousands of viewers, there's giveaways and there's Sharice who is so much fun and you have a relationship with her because she made you laugh. So the next time you're in the market for jewelry, that's going to be top of mind. Right. And then the internal customer. So we have a rewards program and which is another reason they love to shop because girl, they live and die by these rewards. <laughs> so in your brand, if you don't have a loyalty or rewards program, um, make sure that, because a lot of us do, but make sure that you are teaching your consumer the importance of it and what it can get them. It's a whiff them. What's in it for me? So with the rewards program, the more you shop, you can earn your way up into this God place called Secret Society. It's a heaven for Sassy Jones. It's a Facebook group. In that Facebook group, relationships foster like nothing else that I've seen. So much so, there are hundreds of us that live all across the world, yes, because it's an international brand. But when Aisha is traveling through Texas for work, she remembers that Richenda lives there and messages her, never met Richenda, but they know that they're sassy sisters because of the relationship that we foster in that group and they connect at the train station. And that happens, if not daily, weekly. They are linking up, they vacation together, even outside of me. So the impact that we've made in that group is just, it floor, It really floors me. I mean, it's, it's, I can't even explain it. It's a legit sorority, sisterhood. And it's also the events that we do. Um, each, each pod where they are geographically have meetups. And then corporate wide, we host meetups for them and only they can come. So for example, in June, we had anniversary weekend. They flew in from everywhere. And yes, we have a brick and mortar boutique, but they got to shop our warehouse where our employees work, our corporate office, and no one gets to come there except employees. Can you imagine how special they felt? <laughs> I have never heard anything like this. And, and, and no one your, does it. Is your warehouse in the same? Is that also in Richmond, Virginia, where the it is. boutique? OK. Yep. It's seven minutes from the boutique seven minutes from there. And we had a pajama party. And the next day we chartered buses at our way to Charlottesville and took them to King's Family Vineyard, which is the best winery in Charlottesville and greeted them with hot pink tents. And we served them lunch and they had all of the Moscato and Rosé that they wanted all day. And they dressed up in their big hats with their Sassy Jones jewelry on and had an experience while we watched Polo. So that is the kind of thing. And Sharice was there on their level, sitting with them Indian style barefoot. So that is the kind of customer experience that we give. And we have the hearts of these women. And in December, we're going on a cruise. And, uh, yeah, we're, <laughs> we're going on a cruise. And um, it only the VIPs can come on the cruise. However, uh, we are sponsoring a spa day at the Atlantis in Bahamas for them. 
Hmm. We are paying for that. Hmm. So, I mean, your boutique, whoever y'all shopping with, <laughs> you know, you know, that's cute. You know, Instagram is cute. Yeah, likes are cute. But but what we do, we transform lives. And see, we have to break this down because, Sharice, not only are you transforming the lives of your customers, but you have a standard as an online boutique. And that's why I wanted to bring you on here because as someone who, sh- I shop on Instagram, right? But I, as someone who shops on Instagram, I see the difference between people who are really just only thinking Instagram, like, oh, I'm, I sell a lot here when people see the pictures and people who are thinking bigger picture brand. Oh, so girl, yeah. <laughs> let, let's talk about this. So first things first, I want to know when you first set out to do this, this there's levels to this so you couldn't have possibly at that moment in time imagined all that it would become what helped you get from point a i want to start an accessories boutique this will be fun to i now want to take my vips on a cruise girl two things audacity and actually it might be just one thing not fearing to fail because that's audacity so i think what what holds a lot of us back are is like the discovery phase and coming up with the ideas and always worrying about how, but I never, and this is a flaw as well. I never worry about how I set the goal. I'll figure the how out later. And with the, with the trips and and the anniversary weekend and all of that, it's really from me wanting to share an experience with the people who do business with me. That's it. That that's, that's really awesome the only place that it comes from. And in that, yes, it's expensive. Yes, it costs money. But I also have a marketing brain where I can maybe sell a package and they need to buy that package and built in with that package is the cost for this other thing that we need financed. So it's like not getting so caught up in, oh my God, I don't have the resources. Girl, money, money grows on trees. All you got to do is build a ladder. That's it. So I've heard you say, speaking of money, I've heard you say that you made money, you know, as soon as you started, but you weren't necessarily profitable, even though you were working tirelessly. How did you finally get your business to be profitable? (sighs) Girl, um, we did not turn a profit until last year. And how many years into the business was that? Five. Five. Okay. Yeah. Year five. And it's because we grew so fast and that growth, you have to finance that growth. So like for when you're stagnant, you can predict your expenses from month to month. But when you're going month over month over month over month and like your, your inventory bills are just exceeding, exceeding, you can't keep inventories going, going, going. It's difficult, right? It's like it's running a hamster Mm -hmm. wheel. But how we became profitable is by utilizing a system called Profit First. There is a book by an author called Mike Michalowicz, and I heard him speak at a conference, um, TSP, actually. And I TSP stands for, not everyone knows, uh, Traffic, Sales, and Profit. Right, right, by Lamar Tyler. By Lamar Tyler, yes, in Atlanta. (laughs) So if you have not gone and you're an entrepreneur, I don't care what kind of entrepreneur you are, you need to go. Um, And my first time going, I heard this man speak and I remember being so angry, so angry that I cried right there in the conference because he was the answer to what I was looking for in terms of I wasn't paying myself regularly. I wasn't um, saving anything in the business. I didn't have enough resources at that time when I heard him speak. That was just two years ago. Oh, my gosh. I didn't have any employees. It was just me. I was a solopreneur, frustrated. And since hearing him speak and implementing his words, as well as coaching through Lamar Tyler, we have, what, 16 employees running around here now? So it is, it's it's just crazy, but you just have to follow the discipline. Follow the discipline. I love that. And then also you ramped it up with your advertising and and what you were investing Uh into that. Can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's a scary process to say, I'm going to spend $1,000 on on Facebook ads when you need that $1,000 for inventory. How did you become, how did you start that process? How did you become comfortable with it? Girl, this is where relationships come in handy. So make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good girlfriends, ladies, and or gentlemen, like with guys who are about something, who are speaking wisdom into your life. Because here's what happened. I had the desire to ramp up the business and do Facebook ads and paint marketing, but only because I knew that I had brought the business as far as I could bring it. I've done it all. I've maxed it out. I needed another helping hand. So... Um, I looked into paid advertising and I found an agency. 
um, it was scary because this agency charged a fee on top of the daily money that he wanted you to put in Facebook. And at that time, it was $100 a day. And I was like, you got to be crazy. I ain't even making $100. What? What? what, 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 what? This is it's, And you want this fee on top of your... You crazy. Please go sit down somewhere. <laughs> so what I... Uh, did was is I asked my girlfriend, a biz bestie, who had used him previously, and I sat down with her and her husband. I said, "Look, this I'm like the show me state. You can have to show me. Y'all want me to spend this money? He want he trying to get this money? Tell me if it worked for you or not." And having those relationships um, with the business community to be able to bounce ideas off of people and get you know information back. And she told me, she said, Sharice, it'll change your life. I said, what? But I don't have the money. She said, save the money some kind of way. Don't worry about how you're going to pay for it next month. Just save it for a month. Don't worry about the rest. And I promise it'll return a profit. And it did. And so now I'm so addicted that we spend like $1,000 a day on Facebook. Woo, <laughs> <child>. <laughs> it's like, it's like, gambling. that made my heart flutter. That made my heart flutter. <laughs> um, where, where would you recommend a new boutique owner starting? You need to go live. You need to go live because what the difference that's going to separate you from the next boutique brand is the imagery. Sure. Yes. You need to appear professional. Um, do your best to have uh, professional photo shoots and things like that. Not cell phone pictures. You know, you need a good mix of video. You need to be doing the IGTV every day. You need to be posting a minimum of four times a day, always being out there. But what really is going to make the difference is your relationship with your consumers. And so if you're frustrated about because you're doing all this posting and you might make a sale here and there, if you really want to convert, get in front of your brand and not behind it. Be bold and brave enough to get on live stream and answer some questions. Talk about how you were inspired and why you started your brand. But you know how many women out there will resonate with your story because they want to start a business too? You know, and show yourself um, on their level and likable and that trustworthy. You just need to be trustworthy and don't be afraid to allow people to get to know you. Hey guys, it's Nikayla here with a quick word from our sponsors. Hey guys, today's episode is brought to you by you guessed it, Side Hustle Pro Live. Side Hustle Pro Live, which goes down on October 9th, 2019 in Washington, D.C. at the Arc Theater, will be an exciting night of the Side Hustle Pro podcast come to life. Tickets are available at sidehustlepro.co slash live. This is the event that is going to help you finish 2019 strong. You'll get ideas for how to grow your side hustle, market your business, finally monetize your side hustle, and best of all, meet other side hustlers who may be able to collaborate with you or you guys will support each other down the line. Plus, you'll have a shopping experience with side hustlers and Black women-owned businesses. Our special guest that night will be personal branding expert Maya Elias. Let me tell you something about Maya. This is a Black woman entrepreneur who has bootstrapped her business to almost half a million in revenue. This is the woman who taught me how to brand myself, how to relaunch my blog. And that blog would then become the precursor to Side Hustle Pro. And she's helped me continue to scale my business from there. You're going to be learning from the best and you also have the opportunity to ask us questions. So these are the kind of events I went to when I started Side Hustle Pro. When people ask me about networking, how do you forge connections? I formed a lot of relationships with people that I still speak to by going to events like this. As you heard in a recent episode with Sonia Lewis, the student loan doctor, we actually met at a conference in DC for Black women entrepreneurs. We were both side hustlers determined to scale our side hustles into full-time businesses. We met and we chatted briefly. We didn't even chat that long, but we exchanged info. We followed each other on Instagram and have been supporting each other ever since. That is the first step in networking for me. That is the, the step in forging relationship. And so these are the kind of events I was determined to produce. And it's another reason why it took me so long to bring my Side Hustle Pro live vision to reality. I didn't just want it to be your average show. I want you to leave better than you came. 
And that's why we are cultivating the kind of unforgettable night that we are cultivating. So I truly hope to see you in the building on October 9th at the Arc Theater in Washington, D.C. Get your tickets now at sidehustlepro.co slash live. Again, that's sidehustlepro.co slash live. What about when you don't feel camera ready? Do you still force yourself? Every day. Every day. My personal goal is to go live every single day. And I'm not always camera ready, like as hard as it is to believe. But a part of my personal brand is to make sure that I am always showing up. So for me, because I am the owner of this business, when you look at me walking down a sidewalk and I say I own Sassy Jones, you need to look at me and it's believable. So if you are a boutique owner, there should not be a day where you don't appear believable. Therefore, it's easier for you to be camera ready to go live every day or whatever it is that that you plan on doing. But you need to be stay showing up because you have to visually look like your brand. And, you know, I kind of I've been following you for a while, even though we weren't in touch yet. And I, I, I don't know the exact moment, but I feel like there was a point when it went from, oh, Okay, I want to, you know, shop from them one day. This looks like a really uh, cool boutique with awesome items to like, whoa, this is like a real legit enterprise going on over there. (laughs) (laughs) What happened, Sharice? So you start, you really start investing in the brand. And now you you were talking about a multi-million dollar business. Um, Can you talk to us about what that shift looked like for how you work in the business, your hours, your how you hire? How how did that change everything? Oh, my goodness. So it's still a grind. The grind is never, ever over. Um, It just changes and it it evolves. Right. So in the beginning, when I hired my first employee, I could barely pay them. Like, I didn't even know if I would be able to sustain an employee. But what all I did know is that if I could get someone else in to help me, I could walk off and do more income generating activities. So my first piece of advice is to build a team I know that you cannot afford it. I know, I know. But if you can afford the one, then you can free yourself up to go have more meetings, book those different clients, see more people. It's the, If y'all haven't read 10X by Grant Cardone, you have to read it. That will free you up from doing the grunt work to go doing the high level work, right? And so that was the, the first thing for me. Once I built the team, it just started to triple. And then I could walk away and then Sharice could go learn about more marketing strategies, attend more conferences, meet more business owners that have been through it and taught me 50 different ways that I could avoid this one costly mistake, you know? And so now um, we've just tripled it. Like, and year over year, I think that first year where I hired my first employee, we my goal was to do 200000 in revenue that year. We ended up doing, I want to say, 365 k that year. And then the very next year, which was last year, we landed at $2.65 million And like the, the team grew so crazy. And it is all because I continued to ascend to that CEO role. And as hard as it is, trust. And I just made a, a shift last week. It's so difficult to pull yourself out of the day to day and put other people in charge of that. But if you can, if you can manage that fine science, you are going to be so successful <laughs> because you're empowering other people to lead. That's the greater good. But then you're focusing on only what a CEO should focus on, which is generating revenue. And if you're not doing that, you're doing something wrong. Mm. Now we have to we have to run those numbers back one more time because they are just so awesome and inspirational. So you you said you went from 365k in revenue one what was that your third year in business around? Yep. To and the next year was what? 2.65 million. Oh my gosh. And that's unassisted. We don't have an investor. Um I don't have um a bank loan or um funding. Or I've never even entered a pitch competition. But that is just all from organic growth. Mm-hmm. And pl- plus with the investment in, like, how, ma- how much would you say you invested in Facebook or paid marketing by, by year four? Paid marketing overall, year four, we were at about 500 a day. Okay. So, and... The one takeaway that I I do want to emphasize here is not all paid marketing is the same. I like the fact that you you weren't you went with someone who was recommended who had proven results, because 
I could go and throw $500 into a whole bunch of bad ad sets and not yield the same results. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you are learning from people who know how to do it or going ahead and hiring the people who know how to do it. Again, have proven results in your niche and know what they're doing. So let's make that clarification. Now, as you were doing all of this, One thing you pointed out to me is that you are also the mom of four-year-old twins. (laughs) (laughs) I am. And that, that sounds quite hectic. So how did that change your approach to Sassy Jones when you were first starting out, once you realized you were pregnant? Well, the, the conundrum here is that I didn't start to take Sassy Jones seriously until the kids came. So if you're thinking about starting a business, it's not an excuse, but it is a lot easier to start the business when you do not have children. Um, Me and my crazy self, I started small and I did that first trade show before I became pregnant. And then there was like a lull. And I was like, I'm going to leave my job. So I created this exit strategy, which looks like me doing three different trade shows a month all over the world. Like I booked myself in Chicago, New York, and Orlando in the 30 day period for a whole year. And so I was going to do that. That's how I was going to leave my job. But I got pregnant with the boys. And for a moment, I was like, I can't leave because I need my, my coin and this insurance. But I got over it and kept pushing. So when the boys were like four and five months old, we were in the minivan and we were going to these different trade shows. And mama was setting up this pop-up shop to sell her jewelry. And so to me, um, raising my business and raising the kids, it's the hardest thing you could ever do. And I did them both at the same time, but I have to attribute it to a village. You cannot do this kind of scaling um, without some kind of assistance at home. Like uh, my grandma, my husband's mother is amazing. My husband and his sacrificing self is so amazing. He joined the company in January full time. And it's just, you need a good village. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And that scale, I mean, I'm still stuck on these numbers, Sharice. Like, I think (laughs) you you kept talking, but I've still been on, like... (laughs) (laughs) Because one more thing I want to know is, okay... Yes, you were scaling your your marketing, but then also that means you were really ramping up inventory. And how did you manage that process? Crazy. I still don't even have to manage all the way like I want. <laughs> but it is a lot. It's pretty much the equivalent of thinking you have like so many marbles in a jar, but you really don't because the jar got bigger and the marbles, marble started to look smaller. That's the only thing that I could say about that. So like like tangibly what we do is we know our sell through rate each month. And so we know how much of one thing when we get a new arrival between secret society, cause they get all the new stuff first. And when it h- hits what we call GP general population, everyone else, um, we know how much of what we have to have. And so on first run new arrivals, we order way large, way, way, way. Right. And then on a restock, we could order probably about 50% of that one item. But then our inventory changes often, which is another great part about our secret sauce. We introduce new items weekly. So that's also a lot to keep up with. But what I do is I'll just design it all, place one big bulk order, but I will leak it at different phases. And then when I know that we're getting down to a certain uh, level of quantity, then we'll just re-up. Because now when you're designing, the lead time is so greater. You can't just order stuff and then it be here in two weeks. Like It's like months. So you just have to learn how to work in advance as well. And that requires a lot of cash up front. Mm. And so as you, you know, you're making more, you're putting a lot more investment into the business. Mm hmm. It's going back in. Now, with the Secret Society, is this I know they they. You enter into the Secret Society when you've had a certain level of purchases, but is there also Mm -hmm. a membership fee for that? No, it's free. Okay. Yeah, there's no fee. Um, Pretty much what it is, is when you get there, you're welcomed and we have your pictures and everyone sees you because you have to send us your picture. So we welcome you. Everyone in the group makes a big deal about you. So it's just like (laughs) a big 
thing when you come in and then there's a welcome video and then you get in and you see all of the, all of these women with all of this confidence wearing their things in ways that you've not seen and then she sees you and she's speaking to you and you're and getting all of a sudden you've just made these friends and they're inviting you to places and it's like a crazy kind of nice that you've never experienced most of these women haven't experienced this level of kindness, but it's the relationship that we foster. And then, you know, and I'll come in um, most days, either live or trying to respond to every single one of them. And another thing is the engagement. I am in there. It's not just a group that I manage. If I can't get in there one day, it's rare and respond to each of their questions. Oh my God, girl, you look gorgeous today. I love how you styled that, yada, yada. And you don't know what women are dealing with. That stuff goes a long way. That's the stuff we don't hear every day in our lives, you know? And so that that's what that place is for us. It really does go such a long way. I love it. Like I, like I said, I've never heard of anything like this because it doesn't exist, like you said, and it's just beautiful. The, the other part of the inventory piece is the shipping. So. Did you decide to outsource? If not, how do you manage shipping and still keeping the level of personalization that you like to have? We actually consider outsourcing and I was in talks with a, with a, um, a warehouse, but it was a non-negotiable because they could not write handwritten notes because they are so robotic and everything is just so scientific that we have a lot of heart involved with our shipping process. So our shipping today is actually still in-house. Right now we have six shippers. We're hiring for two more, um, ramping up for the holiday season. And we handle anywhere from about 150 to 200 orders a day. But we have it down to a science. So the way that our warehouse is set up, um, everything is sectioned off. Everything has titles on it, so there's no confusion. We have a system with a packer and a puller. And... It's, I mean, it, in terms of the personalization, every single customer has a personalized handwritten note and each note is different. So we're, we're looking at what you ordered and where you live and we'll say, hey, Carla, um, don't forget to slay Atlanta this weekend with your new pearl necklace. Remember, the brooches are removable. Don't forget to put them on a jean jacket. And so those are the kinds of notes that we write in pink ink and if you don't get a note, like our customers are emailing us piss and someone's in trouble. <laughs> you have it down to a science. Love it. <laughs> and then how do you keep up with the pace of creating content? Because you create a ton of content. You put yourself out there and allow people to have access to you daily. How do you mm -hmm. keep up with that? By doing it daily. So it's content is my job. So I'm creating it. I've, be, I've created a habit to create it every single day. So if I'm in the car and I'm at a stoplight, I'm maximizing that time. I'm going to talk to the camera and just save it in my phone. You never know when I'll need that video. Or if I'm looking extra cute on one day when I'm walking down the sidewalk, <laughs> I'm just going to turn the phone on and just save it in my Dropbox. That's mm -hmm. when we have a swipe file and I'll upload it. And you know what? When that necklace restocks, Lord Jesus, I'm going to use this video. So we are all, and the team is accustomed to that as well. They are all collecting content from our operations manager recording herself or one of her employees writing a note. And then we put that on social media like that kind of stuff. We're all just in the mindset of always gathering. But people think that you have to um, get in a certain mind space or physical space to create content. Girl, just whip your cell phone out and just talk to it. That's content. You're speaking to me right now because that's something that I've started out always knowing, but then slowly along the way, the it's so easy to be hypercritical of your appearance or, you know, oh, this isn't good. And instead of just documenting, just do, just daily getting out there and sharing. So thank you for that reminder. And speaking... You're welcome. Oh, yeah, of course. Thank you. And speaking of all this, because you are, I know, are giving so many tips to boutique owners or just any online e-commerce brands who are wondering how to stand out, how to differentiate themselves. If you could kind of sum it up in some overall advice, specifically for <laughs> these kind of businesses, what would you share with them so that they can be operating on a level beyond just an Instagram boutique that does, you know, a few sales daily or an Instagram boutique that might do multiple, maybe even hundred sales, but they, like you said, are where you were, where you were a solopreneur doing it all yourself, thinking you can't afford to take it to that next level. Mm -hmm. So it stems from one thing and it's my favorite quote in the world. 
that you have to take yourself seriously and then other people will take you seriously because growth is a mindset. That's all it is. It's not a lack of resources. It's just purely a mindset. So if you are determined and you can see yourself managing the success because managing success is hard, sustaining it is even harder. If you can see yourself doing those things and all of a sudden you've taken yourself seriously and all of a sudden you've invested in certain coaching programs that you've been side-eyeing because you want to get all this free content from all these coaches, but then you wonder why you're not getting no results. All of a sudden you're, you see your business worth the investment. So you work your, your side hustle or your regular job and save enough money to try the Facebook ads or whatever it is you want to try for 30 days. But I'm not okay with subscribing to, oh, I don't have it. So I'm just going to sit on the sideline. Okay. Well, if you don't have it, that ma'am is a decision. And when you make the decision to show up differently, then things will change. But until then you can manage right where you are, because after all, you can't fall off the ground. You, you can't. You're managing that just fine. So when you're when you're ready to ascend, then then do so and and do it well. Show up well. Oh, you can't fall off the ground, you guys. I don't know about you, but you are snatching me up all the way, all the way up. Um, it is a place that, and I'll talk about this on my next Entrepreneur Diaries, guys. But it is a place. It is it's a fine line that I'm currently. Str- I'm not. I won't say struggling, but it is that I have to take myself seriously now, and I have to let go. Truly let go. I've said this before, and I, you know, started doing it, then kind of inch back into doing it myself again. But I have to let go because <laughs> mm-hmm. I can't fall I off the ground. I know, baby. I know. <laughs> I know. I, I know it's hard. Yeah. I, I just recently, last Tuesday, was like sobbing over something that I have let go of, and you all generally know me as the face of the brand. And if you can imagine this thing that. I have birthed and scaled and been the face of and the spokesperson of. And then we all made a decision just because I was just getting so worn out of doing all of these things that taking these pictures was not an income generating activity. Mm -hmm. Anyone can do that. And so I decided to get models and let them do it. But if you're on the website, you see Sharice everywhere. That to me felt like a death. And it was very hard. A- Letting the models do that because I'm worried about, oh, my God, what if they don't sell the jewelry well enough? What if they they don't convert and convey on camera? What if that affects our sales? Right. And then B, not even being present at this big deal, this photo shoot and letting your team run it. And you're not there to direct and guide. They're just supposed to bring this project back to you that's supposed to make you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Like what? And so that day I was home with like nothing to do because (laughs) I'm so used to doing, 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 but it was a, it was a cause for celebration because I recognized that girl, you built it up to the point where you can be at home on this couch. Why don't you enjoy it? Mm. You know, and it's hard. I get it. But you got to, you got to step back. Right. I appreciate that truth moment because that, you know, we need to hear that. And also it's a, it's a reminder. Someone asked me the other day, do you ever take breaks? And I admitted that I do, but they're never guilt-free breaks. I have not figured out how to take a break without feeling guilty yet. Have you? Mm-hmm. Um, not until recently. And it's going to probably take you to go through some burnout if you haven't already mm-hmm. um, to be able to appreciate the silence. Okay. Well, I'm looking for. Well, I'm not looking forward to the burnout, but I do need no. to get to that point of <laughs> you know, not that's, having you that. Know, you got to go through something yeah. terrible to be able to appreciate the good. So mm-hmm. it might, it might just be. But for me, that's what it looked like. All right. So now we're going to get into the lightning round. You just answer the very first thing that comes to mind. You ready? Okay. All right. Number one. What is the first resource that you can think of that has really helped you in growing Sassy Jones that you can share with the Side Hustle Pro audience? Facebook. Facebook. Okay. Number two, what's been the best business book that you've read or live event that you've gone to this year? Oh, can I get two answers? Oh, yes. Okay. TSP is the best live event that I've been to this year. It's in June in Atlanta. Okay. And the best book that I just got finished reading is by Brene Brown. And it is, uh, dang it. It's a, the D- Dare to Lead. Dare to Lead. Dare to lead. Love it. Yeah. Um, what is a non-negotiable part of your day? Oh, lashes. 
<laughs> love it. Do you know I have been trying to put on lash? I have been. It has been a goal. Fun fact: every day I try to put on a lash because I'm determined to get better. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, what is a personal habit that has helped you significantly in your business? Hmm. Ooh, hot yoga. Ooh. Yeah, hot yoga and working out. I recently hired a personal trainer that helps my mental capacity so much. And hot yoga is so good for detoxing your feelings and just resetting. It's, ugh, I can't say enough about it. Ooh. All right. And final question. What is your parting advice for side hustlers who want to scale their business and go full time, but are worried about losing that steady paycheck? Hmm. Trust your gut. Trust your gut. If your gut's saying stay at your job, stay at your job, work your side hustle. But if your gut is telling you that you can be a world changer and get out here and create some jobs, yeah, it's going to be easy. Yeah. I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's going to be difficult. Very difficult. It's not going to be easy. But if your gut is telling you that you have what it takes, you should go see. All right. So where can people connect with you, Sharice, and Sassy Jones after this show? You can find us online at shopsassyjones.com or you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram at Shop Sassy Jones. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us in the guest chair. And there you have it, guys. Head over to sidehustlepro.co slash Sassy Jones for all of the show notes from this episode, including the links to everything Sharice mentioned. Thanks so much for joining. And I'll talk to everyone next week. Bye. Hey, hey, thanks for listening. Now stay connected in between episodes by texting Side Hustle Pro to 44222. You'll get my weekly Six Bullet Saturday newsletters where I share what I'm up to, what I'm reading, my business tip of the week, and resources to help you grow your side hustle. And I'm working behind the scenes on some live events, which my email list will get access to first. So make sure you're in the loop. Text Side Hustle Pro to 44222 or visit sidehustlepro.co slash SBS. Thank you.